Aging Matters on BCTV is supported by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. Hello and welcome to Aging Matters. This is a show that's provided by and sponsored by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. My name is Ann Bartlett and I am the Public Advocacy and Outreach Manager and your host for Aging Matters. We have a jam-packed show today and uh, the main program will be talking about veterans benefits. But first I'd like to tell you about two uh, summer programs that we have. One is our cooling program, and what we mean by that is, is that we have an opportunity to provide free air conditioners to those seniors who qualify. I'm going to just quickly, briefly give you some of the parameters about the eligibility. You need to be 60 years of age or older. You need to have a heart or breathing related condition such as emphysema or COPD. Uh, there is an income of one person having a $2,000 per month income or less, or two people, a couple, $4,000 a month or less. And you have not received an air conditioner from our agency over the last three years. Um, that's really going to tell you if you want more information, please call our agency at 610-478-6500 asked to speak to somebody about more details with the air conditioning program. I also want to share another program that's called the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. That's again an annual program, it's statewide, and it really is benefiting and supporting our local farmers and seniors. The program uh, details, the eligibility of the program is that you must be 60 years of age or older or at least 60 years of age by the end of this calendar year and you must meet the income eligibility guidelines. For that program, one person income for the household of one is $25,142 or less. For a two person in the household is 33,874. We do have more, uh, but I won't go into those details right now. The program provides a one time opportunity for you to receive four checks that each have a value of $6 for a total of $24. Those checks are to be spent at farmer's market stands, the identified ones, and we have those lists that accept the checks on produce, that's fruits and vegetables grown here in Pennsylvania. Uh, without, I won't go into more details, there's also an application process for that, so please call the Berks County Area Agency on Aging at 610-478-6500 for more information and for applications for both programs. With that out of the way, without further ado, we're going to turn the program over and I want to welcome my guest today is Steve Menino and he is the Veterans Benefits Educator and uh, Outreach Coordinator for the Berks County Department of Veterans Affairs. Thank you, Steve, Thank for you. being with me today. I appreciate your time and all the wonderful information you have to share with us about particularly a lot of the benefits for veterans or their spouses and or family sure. that I think people really want to know about and should know about because it's something that they may be entitled to. So mm -hmm. thank you for being here, You're appreciate welcome. it. Um, I know there's a lot, but what we can just start off with is you represent kind of the local VA. Would you tell us a little about where is that office? There is an office here in the city of Reading. Sure, Ann. Uh, the office is uh, at 726 Cherry Street, so it's just up the block. It's right across from the Santander, uh, perform or Santander Arena, and uh, they, we operate from 8 to 5. We, we have lunch from 12 to 1, but 
we're open, we're here to help. Great, great. Um, we will post that information later on the show so that you can make a note of how to reach them if you have any questions about the benefits. Mm -hmm. I thought that you have so many, and so I think that the best thing is, as we talked earlier, is for somebody to actually make an appointment if they really want to discuss all of the different opportunities. Is that not correct, Steve? Yes, please. Okay. Um, you know, it's on the screen there, and the, um, just give us a call or email us. Uh, there's there both of them are on there and uh, just so everyone knows there's a benefit presentation every Tuesday at 1 30 that's where you can get a, a whole snapshot of all the benefits and then ask questions so, oh that's wonderful opportunity and that's also for your um, spouse okay. so the veteran and the spouse can can join okay and we have the, the flyer so let's just show them that it's at 726 Cherry Street is mm -hmm. the office the office hours, the telephone number is 610-378-5601 if they want to make an appointment mm -hmm. or they want to walk in for that Tuesday um, presentation time. Right. Email is their website and there's also a federal VA hotline phone number should they have questions that are pertaining to more of the federal benefits, right? Correct. Okay, well thank you and we can show that again later. I think when I think of veterans benefits, there's a couple of kind of areas or categories that I think of but don't know enough about. Mm -hmm. One, I believe, is just the overall um, health care and anything related to health care and benefits. And that's such a broad area, Steve, that I know we could be here for days talking mm -hmm. about it. So let's narrow it down a little mm -hmm. bit. Why don't you start with telling us a little bit about the health care component of the benefits? Sure. The health care is... Uh, broken up into several priority groups but the main thing uh, that I want to stress is don't count yourself out go ahead and enroll There's a form called 1010 easy you can get that through uh, online you can come to our office remember that phone number <laughs> call us come on in we'll help you assist filling that out now there's a few things that you're going to need to have with you and Probably the most important thing is a DD-214, which is your discharge papers, okay? There's a, there's a listing of codes on there from on and roll down, so you wanna make sure you have that rating, that code on your DD-214. That's the only hard copy you need to have with that form. You can fax it in, you can bring it, you can actually bring it to our clinic in Wyoming, missing, and they will forward you that information. So. Uh, I, I was speaking to the eligibility and enrollment folks and they, they told me just apply because it's so important that you do that. So when you say, so the, the first form that you gave a number for, because you that Veterans Affairs Office mm -hmm. likes a lot of numbers. <laughs> 10, 10 easy. 10, 10 easy and that's the form, the form mm -hmm. to fill out for enrollment or to see eligibility for health care both it's okay. enrollment and eligibility okay. so once you fill that information out you're going to need your social security and other other pertinent facts your income uh -huh. levels then the enrollment and uh, the eligibility uh, section will look that over and they will call you if they have any questions but then within a couple weeks you'll get a phone call or a letter stating that you have been enrolled in the health system and this is what you're supposed to do next. Okay, oh, okay. there's, there's a okay. broad things, and I don't want to like um, you said. Anna, if this and that, it's and this and that, lots of things. <laughs> okay. But it's important okay. that it is, and even folks that are on Medicare, yes. hey, go for it anyway and, and apply. Well, that's what I was going to ask. So, if you know, is there a time when you go for that versus some other type of insurance, or if I'm if I'm Medicare age of 65 and older? Should I ignore one or the other? Would you you would work? You would have you would do both. Is that your advice? Yes. Okay. I would say if you're even if you have a Medicare A and B, mm -hmm. and then you have a supplemental mm -hmm. uh, on that, you can still apply for the VA, and that will just give you some other added features. Okay. Um, one, and I also go to the VA, and the Lebanon is the third best. VA hospital in the country. They are a phenomenal. Hearing aids, okay? 
Um, Medicare won't cover them, but there's a possibility, I don't want to say they will, but there's a mm -hmm. possibility that you can get them through the, the VA, but first you have to enroll. And that's probably based on the, di the, di the um, disability related situation with that. that. That kind of thing comes into play. Yes, and they're, okay. going to do an, they're going to do a hearing test on you, and it'll mm -hmm. determine whether you qualify for them or not. Okay, but again, it would be, a lot of it's based on <clears throat> that, that eligibility of, a, of the veteran with the experience and the disability that they may have had due to their service. Correct. Okay. The disability conditions, uh, the service-connected or uh, degree, you'll, you'll get a rating on that, a okay. percentage. That's going to determine what your your uh, priority group. There's there are priority groups one through eight, and that'll determine what kind of care you have. Okay, okay. but it never hurts to check into it, does exactly. it? Exactly. And so, if they are interested, and they can, can where do they? Uh, repeat again for me. Where do they get that form? They can get it online. Okay. They can get it in our office. Okay. Uh, they have some, I believe, at the YMS in clinic. Okay. Or they can call and and do it in person. Okay, good. Uh, at the Lebanon clinic there. Oh, good. All right, good. Um, the, the, I've, is there anything else before we move on to some other pieces that you wanted uh, to say about that health care? Yes. Healthcare? Okay. Yes. Um, I just was over there this av or earlier this morning, and the question came up about transportation. You're in the VA system. You got uh, an appointment over at the Lebanon VA, and that's like 40 minutes away. Mm -hmm. You have no way of getting there. There's a couple ways you can call, and the best thing to do is call our office. We can hook you up with the right people, and they will have a shuttle that comes by and picks you up to bring you to those appointments over in uh, the Lebanon Medical Center. And so that, um, the basic, you know, I can, I can get the numbers, but just call us. Mm -hmm. Just call us and we'll help you out. Okay. Or I suppose if, would this also work if they've been enrolled and they're, they're going to the Lebanon VA for care or, you know, the regular doctor appointment, I guess, mm -hmm. can they then also, they could, you, if you're there at the center, could you go talk to somebody at that time? or make a call to make those arrangements for like your next doctor's visit? Yes, okay. uh, what they stressed was please plan ahead and give them as much notice as possible so they can have, um, they can have that on their calendar. Absolutely, there's a lot that need to go probably mm -hmm. and we need to coordinate that. Exactly. And I think it's glad, I'm glad that it's back because I believe there was a period of time with, with our COVID situation that, that was halted and it was difficult for folks. Yes. So that's great that, that that's back in play, mm -hmm. that they have that medical transportation yeah. piece. Um, I, I do want to, before we go further, you mentioned we talked about the Lebanon VA and then the YMS in clinic. Can you tell me a little bit about how the two either stand alone or work together for, for a veteran? Yes. What the uh, why I'm missing clinic is basically it's almost like a urgent care. Okay. Uh, it's a small facility that has primary doctors that you you would be assigned to, and you go in there for blood work, for labs, for uh, like sick call, that type of thing. You go into now if there's something more involved, like X-rays and other types of things, you would go to the um, the main hospital there in Lebanon. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. That helps helps to know which where do I begin? Mm -hmm. Where do I go? Yes. What do I seek out? Anything else? I'd like to talk about um, some things that we talked about earlier with some education opportunities. Um, so can you explain some of those different aspects of the educational piece for veterans and or family? Right. Correct. The 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 VA is is phenomenal with. Uh, education benefits and I actually took uh, I had the GI Bill and so there's we don't have time to go through them all but what I suggest you do is contact our office we have a veteran service officer they call them VSOs who is specifically trained and educated in these education benefits and they're not only for the veteran if for some reason the veteran passes away or is a service connected at a hundred percent there's chances that your spouse or family members up to the age of 23 can enroll in a college and it's paid for. But like I said, there's, there's lots of different 
uh, conditions for that. So mm -hmm. please just contact us and we can give you a lot more information. Um, is that, I, I just want to clarify, is that the the GI Bill, the 9-11 GI Bill, or is that the Dependent Educational Assistance Program? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a lot of, um, the, the military and the veterans, they, they love acronyms. And <laughs> yes. so the post 9-11 GI Bill is pretty much for the veteran. Now the veteran okay. can uh, give some of that over to their spouse or family member, but also there's a chapter 35. That's the one I was, I was mentioning about where if the, the veteran dies in service or has a service-connected disability of 100%, they can do that. There's also vocational rehab, which is another type of education where they, uh, depending on your, um, your disabilities, they could put you back into work and give you mm. an education for that. So uh, lots of those, there's a, a chapter 33, chapter 31. <laughs> I don't want to go too far into it, but please contact us. There's some opportunities there exactly. that if you don't check it out, you may miss out right. on something that would be and beneficial to you and or your family member. And you know, if anything, Steve, it's still assisting in some way to help with that. Even if it's a little bit, it's more than nothing. And that's still a great benefit to be able to supplement yes. your own income to do so or whatever so mm -hmm. that's great um, some of the other uh, known I guess or maybe not known uh, areas and I know a little bit enough to make it dangerous now <laughs> is is something with that I we put into a pension mm -hmm. title I'll call it title because okay. <laughs> I think there's probably multiple names and titles and chapters and numbers for that. But um, I know that we talked a little bit of before and I am more familiar with the one that is called aid and attendance pension. But we'll talk about that one as it relates to some of the others, if you will, that we also talked about earlier. So I, I'm going to let you figure out which way to start on okay. that, pro, on the pension. All right. I'm going to try to make it pretty simple okay. you have you have pension and compensation pension is uh, there's a, a survivor's pension and a non-service connected real quick service connected is you were injured while you were on active duty or your in the whatever you had was made worse during that so the survivor pension is a tax-free monetary benefit payment to low income that's the key low income unremarried surviving spouses or eligible um, children. Now this, they have certain deductibles such as unreimbursed medical expenses. So in a nutshell, if you make only a small amount of money through Social Security or others, you may qualify for this pension. It's not... And that's a survivor pension. That is a survivor okay. pension, which, um, like I said, we have veteran service officers that will guide you in. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific, okay. but it's uh, because they look at your your medical expenses, what your income is, and what your assets, and they'll they'll work all that in and see if you qualify for that. I recommend people doing that and getting ahead, even if uh, right now they don't need it, but maybe five, ten years down the road, their expenses increase and mm -hmm. they may qualify. Okay. The other one is a dependency and indemnity compensation (DIC). That's another acronym. <laughs> okay, now that's for service connected. Um, veterans that have passed with a then they died of that service-connected disability if that's the case they will uh, compensate the spouse uh, a, mo a monthly compensation for the rest of their lives and it's very important now this this one is not income based so it doesn't okay. matter how much the spouse makes uh, it, it's given to them the key thing is, and I do this myself, is let your spouse know of where your papers, where your documents are, and file them with the uh, Berks VA or your funeral director. Have that DD-214, have those paperwork, because it's so much easier at a time where there's grief, there's, mm -hmm. there's shuffling, everything. So, and we'll get back to that, but I'm glad you sure. pointed that you know many times we do talk to people and they'll say I don't know like if the surviving spouse goes I don't know where they put it I don't know where it's kept 
Um, so it is important for important papers. And we, you know, in the aging world, a lot of the important papers are power of attorney and things like that. But this is most important to make sure you know where that DD-214 and some mm -hmm. of those other pieces are so that you can produce them for, for multiple things, including some benefits. Yes. So, so, and I'm assuming that that dependency and indemnity compensation is also very specific, you know, that mm -hmm. you have to meet that very specific criteria also. So it's good to talk to a VSO. Right. Okay. Then there is my aid and attendance pension. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> There's two monthly supplemental uh, pensions uh, or amounts that could be added on to the survivor pensions or the indemnity and compensation. Okay. okay. They're called aid and attendance, and I think most folks have heard of them. There's aid and attendance, and then there's housebound. Not so many people have heard of that. Right. Now let me break it down. Aid and attendance is an additional amount that will be compensated to the, the spouse or the veteran. It goes either way if the, if the veteran's still living, to care for them on daily activities, showering, feeding, other types of that. They'll have to have some kind of doctor's proof that's saying that they do require this. Mm -hmm. But that's one way, and, and they, uh, it's, it's, um, it's broken down each year into a monthly um, compensation for that. The other one is housebound, and that's basically the, the individual is unable to get on his, uh, out of their house on their own. And that's another supplement that they'll add on on a monthly basis. Mm, okay, and I'm gonna clarify because my, I, I'm familiar with the aid in attendance because some of the uh, individuals that I am, have worked with who either are the veteran or the surviving spouse of the veteran need that in-home care. Yeah. And so I'm just going to clarify that if they complete that and they meet the requirements and they receive, as you said, this monthly uh, monetary compensation, it goes to that individual, correct? Correct. And then it is hopefully used, the purpose is to help, help offset the costs involved in that in-home care, or I know in some cases it is it is usable in a long-term care facility, like in a personal care uh, mm -hmm. setting where somebody had to move there because they needed that care for personal right. care assistance. So it still comes to the individual, but they're using that to help also pay for the costs, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, they will have sure that. that. Um, uh, and, and they, there's a whole new program that's coming out, and I don't want to get into it now, but it's for the uh, caregiver and support for that. Uh, but there's wow. new changes okay. coming about. That's why you need to stay abreast with us and, and check us out you know, on our um, Facebook or LinkedIn. or we, we get all this information out, but it's ever changing. Okay, and it's good to attend those Tuesday Briefings. sessions that are yes. open, available, and free. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we'll move along in the, in the, uh, uh, to another benefit that I think we hear about but we're not really sure what it means. I mean, we know, but we don't know. It's, we, we refer to it as the burial benefits. Okay. But I think that uh, that's kind of what, 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 what is involved in that. You know, is it, you know, you see the flags on the tombstones, is it the flag and that, you know, that, or, or what is all part of that benefit? Okay, what the burial benefits include, and it, it's a great, program it's uh, which helps the veterans uh, I mean we've done so much to improve that but the the benefits are paid to the spouse or designated family member or executor to partially offset the cost of burial expenses plot costs transportation costs for veterans and of the remains mm. so it's it's a it's a whole myriad it, it's not a lot um, but there is some you know compensation for those. There's also military honors. There's, uh, if you would like military honors at your funeral or a bugler or taps playing, all these things, you need to coordinate with the um, funeral director if you are part of one or just come to our office and we have someone specifically that's experienced with mm. that program with death and burial. Um, let me know if there's anything else. So 
again, and the encouragement to seek out your uh, the Veterans Affairs Office with that trained VSO because they may be missing out on that opportunity. And there, I'm sure there's some paperwork also involved. Um, I think you mentioned also about the funeral director. So can you tell us about how do I make that happen about uh, when we were talking before, there is a, pre, when you're doing like pre-planning, mm -hmm. can you share sure. how I can incorporate that if, you know, we encourage people to do that pre-planning of all kinds of things, including our own funeral arrangements, so I want to incorporate that, right? All right. <laughs> um, yes, it's very important, and I've actually done the whole, um, the whole legwork to do that, and it's not that hard, but the, the key thing there is, is seek out if you know where you want to be uh, buried at if you have a funeral director in mind there's lots of them over in Berks in Berks County have that paperwork though they each one of these funeral directors are aware of military and veteran benefits they link up and connect with us through our office okay. and when someone passes it's a it's a seamless effort to start the paperwork to get the the spouse or, or, um, or family member those benefits that they in, in need. And the pre-need determination letter is something that, it's a form 40-1007. It's a simple form you fill out and you say, well, this is where I wanna be buried at, along with your spouse, because your spouse is also eligible. You'll have that, uh, whether it's Fort Indian Town Gap, the National, the cemetery there, or wherever else. You'll have that, and it gives that um, the center there at the uh, Fort Indian Town Gap or wherever else uh, you'll know who it is and what you what you intend to do. And then you'll you'll get a letter back, and you keep that in that all those important records ready to go just okay. in case, because I know it's um, it's a tough time for folks, and we get phone calls all the time where uh, I didn't realize mm -hmm. that I could do this, and so hopefully. Yeah. For folks that are listening today, go out there and, and get us. Um, we'll, we'll help you with information, but we're here to help. Good. And we have two minutes. If you can quickly mm -hmm. talk about um, there are some uh, veterans' homes, and that can you just share with sure. us a, a, a quick sentence or two about that? Yes. The veterans' homes, there's six of them in the state, and again our office we can help you out with that these are nursing home assisted okay. living care and they you're saying well why why go mm -hmm. to these homes well they can help especially if you have a surface connected disability they can they can help a lot and and, and they don't cost as much as some of these others that are out there. So at least with check veterans. it out I mean yeah. while you're meeting about some of the other benefits that are more immediate you may want to see what what is yes. out there and what's available you know that that if there is an in, an incident and you end up in the hospital and need nursing facility care you may benefit from going to one of the six VA facilities right. in Pennsylvania it doesn't hurt it just gives you another option okay so I know we have a lot um, that we've talked about I guess the key point would be when in doubt ask give you a call <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to have them uh, call the, the, the local Berks County Veterans Affairs Office known as the Etchberger Veterans Service Center of Berks County at 726 Cherry Street and that phone number is 610-378-5601. Um, take some time, figure out what it is you might qualify for, what forms and paperwork you need to search for and uh, they'll, they'll walk you through the process of a variety of things that you might qualify for. So thanks so much, Steve. A lot, lot to cover and a lot of information that is out there for the veteran, the surviving spouse, the spouse, and the family. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, well, thank you for tuning in to Aging Matters, and we will see you next month.
Aging Matters on BCTV is supported by the Berks County Area Agency on Aging. 